Hi everybody and welcome to Deep. Uh, this episode we're going to be talking about uh, the Beatles album covers, uh, which are a treasure trove of uh, history and beautiful imagery and uh, also hidden uh, secrets and mysteries. And today on the show I have uh, Richard Porter, who is uh, by any measure a Beatles expert. Uh, <laughs> yes, lovely to have you on Richard. Uh, Thank you. For those who don't know, Richard organizes um, uh, Beatles tours in London, uh, in the West End and in Marylebone, five days a week, I think, Richard, is it? That's right. Yes. Guiding right. Uh, visitors <laughs> to this great city around all of the Beatles uh, sites in London and uh, giving them an explanation of the history of the band and their relationship with the city of London. Uh, and Richard, we're going to talk about uh, Beatles album covers and we're going to take it right from the beginning and we're going to go through them all. Right. And we're going to okay. talk about that history and the meaning behind them. Cool. Um, obviously, we're going to focus on the album covers that are the most iconic, mm -hmm. uh, especially the later album covers when yeah. things started to get really interesting. So, right. first of all, let's look uh, at the early ones, which are maybe yes. slightly less deep in terms of interpretation or explanation, sure. but they're yes. very beautiful. Uh, yeah. And um, actually, the first thing I realized when we put these covers together in 1963 to 65, so taking mm -hmm. us from the first Please Please Me up to Rubber Soul, is yeah. just how much output is here. Yeah. <laughs> six That's albums. I know. <laughs> six albums in three years, and you take a modern day yeah. band, if they produce an album every three years, it's, uh, it's a fairly good rate. Uh, and so much good music here as well. Um, which is your favorite of these, the first uh, set of covers? Ooh, I think it, with the Beatles, with the, the black and white. Uh, with the half shadow, which yeah. is kind of similar to pictures that Astrid Kirshner took of them in Hamburg in yeah. their very early days. I wonder if that was the reason. But it's the, the more stylistic one, I think, of the uh, the early ones. Yeah, it's a beautiful shot. It's like the classic mop top uh, shot, yeah. and they all look very moody and handsome. Uh, yeah, I don't know why why Ringo is bottom corner relegated to the bottom corner. Is that already an early signifier of his importance in the band? Uh, well, what Robert Freeman said, he was the last one to join and the smallest. So, <laughs> Fair uh, enough. The others are pretty much all exactly the same height. Yeah. So um, maybe that's one reason. I don't know, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this is like they were at the pinnacle, like of the boy band, you know, girls screaming um, over them uh, yeah. at that at that point. Yeah, I kind of flinch at that um, that description and to kind of compare them <laughs> to one direction and stuff. But uh, they're all, I mean, yeah, I mean, people are calling them the first boy band, but I think they're a lot more, you know, because they write their own songs and stuff, they're a lot more than that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But I guess but I in addition to all of the other amazing things that they did, they also laid down a template for what a, you know, attractive set of four boys yeah. could achieve. Uh, yes. with screaming crowds. I think you're you're probably not the only one who was jaded with it because when you look at Beatles for Sale, for example, yes, uh, you know it almost looks there's tiredness in those eyes. Is there definitely, not? definitely, yeah. yeah. I think they're by then the you know doing the two albums a year and doing all the tours and stuff and pretty much got to them. I think yeah, yeah. you can and see that. Yes. Even the title Beatles for Sale, uh, you know, says yes. says, uh, says something. Uh, uh -huh. And then Hard Day's Night and Help. Obviously, both uh, kind of movie promotion. Exactly. Uh, okay. Yes. Um, and of course, the uh, it's supposed to say help in semaphore, but yeah. it doesn't. Oh, it doesn't. <laughs> it didn't look right. Oh. So Robert Freeman changed it. I can't remember actually what it says now, but it's not help. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe if anybody does know who anybody reads semaphore, they can leave yeah. it in the comments below the video and tell us what it actually does uh, say. Yeah. Yeah. It just looks like a bunch of random. Uh, yes. Random shapes. Mm -hmm. um, and then for me, what's fascinating looking at Rubber Soul, uh, mm -hmm. you, it's it's kind of looks like the beginning of something, right? And beginning yes. of a new phase. Uh, Slightly distorted. Maybe their minds were as well on certain illicit substances, shall we say? Yep, it certainly <laughs> has that feel to it. Uh, it's got that yeah. kind of trippy, uh, kind of pot uh, uh, feeling about it. The haircuts are getting a bit scruffier and a bit more. Yeah. Uh, um, this is basically, these haircuts are the template that uh, Liam and Noel Gallagher used for uh, Oasis, I think. <laughs> yeah, not only beetle thing they copied either. Well, no, no, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, it's a journey really from a kind of clean, uh, almost like, like very rock and roll influence, you know, from the late 50s, early 60s that you see in Please Please Me to, uh, in an incredibly short space of time, 
to uh, the beginning of the counterculture of uh, uh, of, uh, of the mid '60s. Mm -hmm. um, so there's already a big a big journey there. Um, yes. and, and but if we move on, uh, uh -huh. when things really start to get interesting, yes. And I think one of my favorite Beatles albums, probably my joint favorite, mm -hmm. uh, is is Revolver, which was like a kind yes. of a watershed moment. Um, yes. Do you want to talk us through like the album itself and then this cover? Uh, sure. What it kind of meant at the time. Well, the album I think was a giant leap. I mean, the first track recorded for Revolver was "Tomorrow Never Knows." I yeah. mean, wow, what a start. I, I mean, yeah. where did that come from? It's the first one. Also, they had um, Jeff Emmerich as the uh, engineer. And I think he was very important in terms of very, very well with, with uh, George Martin. Yeah. Now, for instance, he, he put uh, John's vocals for the Leslie speaker to get that weird you know, sound of him, the vocals and stuff. But the album cover, of course, was done by Klaus Vormann, who was their great friend from Hamburg. Okay. He was, he actually, he was the girlfriend, he was, he was the boyfriend of Astrid. Of course, you know, of course he went off with, she went off with Stu Sutcliffe. Okay. But uh, Klaus was one of the, the exes in Hamburg. Okay. And very much image conscious. He, I mean, he had a Beatle haircut. Right. All the Beatles, you know, that, you know, because they were inspired by the French existentialist movement. Yeah. And the haircuts and everything else, the style. And he was an artist too. And they got him to design the album cover. Great. And, do and you in think fact, you can actually see him in George's hair, just to the right to the cover, okay. on the right of the cover, in George's hair, you can see his picture. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So he hid himself in there. He's actually on there himself, yes. Okay. <laughs> nice. And, and do you think, yeah. like, who in the band, or were they all very interested in, in visual art? Or do you think there was anybody in particular in the band who was kind of pushing this because it, it in it like the, obviously the music like you say tomorrow yeah. never knows massive leap forward sure. but this cover is so unlike all the previous covers uh, i think certainly john and paul especially i mean john went to art college so yeah. obviously he, he knew about art but paul was getting into the avant-garde scene at the time okay uh, through peter asher really you know the brother his girlfriend jane and okay. hanging out with lights of john dunbar and uh, people like that and barry miles okay uh, they started the Interkar Art Gallery, for instance, where John met Yoko. So it's getting much into the, the art scene, really, at this time. Okay. So they were hanging out with hipsters. Yeah. 1960s hipsters. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's more comes into uh, Sergeant Pepper, which we'll talk about later. Yeah. But uh, yeah. this is the start of it, I really think, for, for that, yeah. Yeah. That's no, a fantastic cover. It really is. Um, yeah. And then... Then there's this uh, yeah. this abomination, which not many people know about, probably because it was only released in uh, in North America, um, yes. and I believe it was some sort of a compilation album of of odds and sods from previous albums. So it wasn't yes. not an official album per se. But the story is interesting just because of what happened with this cover. I don't know if you want yes, to tell us about it. Rob, that's right. Robert Whittaker was the uh, photographer. He is very much surrealist. Right, and he did a series of photos of the Beatles, kind of through life. And there's loads of different pictures with various things, and this is kind of the deaf one, I suppose. At the end of this, this uh, series of pictures wasn't made meant to be the album cover at all. Yeah. So it was just taken by Capitol Records in America, and it, it, people have said it's you know, it's, you know, it's the butcher maybe Capitol Records butchering their albums and stuff. <laughs> But it, it was that was that was people reading things into it, and it is yeah. I mean, it's taken in the context of the the the, the or the series of pictures. It kind of you know you can see what what he was trying to get at. But as an album cover on its own, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I've read <laughs> also references to like the Vietnam War, and you know that there was some yeah. sort of co commentary on that. Uh, yes. I think I think it's just like just so kind of shocking in when yeah. with what we've looked at before. Uh, yes. and, and just thinking of the time as well, you've just gone from the innocent early 60s to boom, yes. uh, something as crazy as this. I know, I know the Beatles the, with me and kind of babies. Band, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's crazy. And uh, of course, the funny thing is that uh, Capitol Records um, redrew it and uh, re uh, changed it for another picture. But what they were supposed to do, the people went around and supposed to just take the cover off and re replace it. But, uh, but uh, they just uh, pasted it up the new cover on top of the old one. So they took the hundreds of thousands of albums that were already printed yeah. and they yeah. just stuck 
the, uh, most, the and most think, of them were re- most of them were replaced, but some were just pasted over. Hmm. And you can still, if you there's a way of seeing which, if you've got the if, uh, the the one with the butcher underneath, you can just about see that their hair coming through the the cover. And there's a, there, I mean, there's various websites that will tell you how to get the, uh, the 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 replacement cover off, and underneath you've got a butcher cover, and they're worth a lot of money now. Oh, wow, that's amazing! Actually, we have the cover that they'd used here to stick yes. on top, like yeah. super boring. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what Paul is doing. <laughs> Again, that that became one of the Paulie's dead rumors. You know, he's in a coffin. Oh, he's in a coffin. This is where it started, <laughs> was it? Yeah, he doesn't even Rick look Cox. like himself. He looks like somebody else. He looks like Jarvis Cocker or something. I don't know. Yeah, but, um, even so, their clothes are horrible. It's just I don't know. It's yeah. Uh, but it's uh, it's uh, yeah, it's a crazy story. Uh, and the album, of course, it just it, I mean, it's, there's tracks from about three or four different albums there. Yeah. <laughs> on the album itself, so you know. Yeah. Even stuff from Help, you know, yeah. and Rubber Soul and Revolver. Well, it's an early best of, I guess. I mean, there's some great, yeah. there's like great songs on there, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, never released on this side, or I. I think I read that it was later, like even more recently after 2000 released as a cd in uh in the uk or more widely but um uh it is part of a sort of box set of okay. the capital albums basically and not 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 individually okay all right yeah. well moving swiftly on from that tobacco we have probably uh, yes. uh along with abbey road probably their most iconic uh album cover yes. Absolutely. Uh, uh you know this and i think this is when the band were getting to their creative uh yeah. peak um yeah so talk us through the story of this uh all right cover. Well, again all of it came to about paul mccartney getting involved in the avant-garde art scene mm. and he had a great friend uh called robert fraser who was an art gallery owner and robert fraser was like other rock box stars he's been he was a good friend of the rolling stones and people like that mm. and i think they wanted some of the sort of iconic cover and robert fraser got paul mccartney in touch with Peter Blake and his wife Jan Howarth. Uh, I mean, he's a very well known um, pop artist, mm-hmm. Peter Blake. And uh, Paul actually did the illustration of uh, what he wanted. And it's all their, their iconic people. They, they're, they're asked to choose who they wanted on the album cover picture. I mean, they chose their uh, sort of, you know, heroes and stuff. And Peter Blake had a, a bit of a say as well. For instance, so the boxer on the left of the cover is uh, Sonny Liston. Okay. Well-known boxer. In fact, uh, Peter Blake still got the... Uh, it's, it's actually a waxwork from Madame Two Swords. Okay. As are the, 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 the earlier Beatles standing by the current Beatles. I think the idea was to show them sort of before and after type thing. <laughs> Why do they look so miserable and dressed in black and... Uh... What's yeah, um, because it's people as read it as you know, it's Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band is a new band. It's not the Beatles. It's someone else, ah. and it's maybe it's it's uh, you know it's the, the 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 grave of the Beatles. I don't know. I mean, so the, the burying and being Sergeant reborn Pepper's as these colourful, yeah. crazy uh, characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, some of the people in the background then, so, uh, yes. you know, some are really obvious, easy to recognize. Yes. Karl Marx, I yes. see Oscar Wilde, I see Marilyn Monroe. Um, yes. Bob Dylan. It, yes, Bob Dylan Bob. is the only other music, like contemporary musical artist on there. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Apart from, of course, there's another Beatle on there. Oh, there's five okay. Beatles. On the left, just above Sonny Liston, the lady with the light blue hat, yeah. is Stuart Sutcliffe. Okay. Who is, of course, John Lennon's best mate at um, art college and was a member of the Beatles for a long time. But he stayed with them in he stayed in Hamburg well, it, to be with Astrid, his girlfriend. Okay. He wanted to study at the Hamburg Art College. And he died of a brain hemorrhage age only 21 in uh, April 62. 62, okay. Yeah, so he is on there. That's it's always a good immor- uh, immortalized in the uh, on yes. Sergeant Pepper's. Um, that's also that's also a good Beatle trivia question. Name the five Beatles on the Sergeant Pepper album cover picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or you could do how many Beatles are on it, and there's like four plus yes. four plus one. Um, yes. Great. And of course, you got the doll on the right saying "Welcome the Rolling Stones." Oh right, yeah, of course, yeah. The, uh, so they're on there as well because they're, they're hanging out quite a bit at the time. Okay. In yeah. fact, the um, 
uh, Mick Jagger and Keith Richards are at the recording session of A Day in the Life when they're doing the orchestral build-up bit. So, uh, so they're hanging it, in. So it was a kind yeah. of friendly competition between the two bands, I guess. Yeah. The two biggest yeah. bands in the world at that time. Sure. Um, and uh, they recorded together as well. So Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyone else on there that's... Uh, um, well, there's a few that were left off because, um, for instance, Gandhi was going to be on there. Right. But uh, EMI said, oh, it's just Joseph Ockwood, the head of EMI, said, oh, you know, what about our Indian market? They might take offence. Oh. So Gandhi was taken off. Okay. Apparently Hitler was going to be on there, but uh, I think he, I'm not, he might just be behind the Beatles, actually. <laughs> some reason Adolf Hitler was going to be on there. Yeah. Just interesting. Is this uh, after John's "We're bigger than Jesus" uh, statement? Yes, okay, so I can imagine they were a bit tired of uh, yeah, yeah, courting controversy. And apparently, they had to. Uh, they they were it, Judge Flock, the head of EMI, insisted they write to all the uh, living people who's going to be on the cover to get their permission. Oh, to be on the cover, and apparently, you know, the actress Mae West, mm -hmm. she sent back a letter saying, "Why would I be in a Lonely Hearts Club?" <laughs> <laughs> but but they they uh but in, in the end they wrote back and said you know it's not that and you know she, she's on there in the end <laughs> yeah great um and then we have this kind of at the bottom we have this the yellow flowers yes. uh yeah. which i've all, uh, heard a couple of stories about there's two um, different ones okay. yeah one is it's in the shape of a bass guitar, which of course Paul McCartney's instrument part of the Paul is dead thing. Right. Yeah, it's that it says Paul question mark. In other words, is he still alive? So that's one. Of the, they, I mean, there's lots of the clues on the album cover as well. So you notice know, there's a hand above Paul McCartney's head. Okay. It'll, that's a spun, spun, apparently a sign of death somewhere. Okay. <laughs> God knows where. <laughs> I got to ask you, uh, Richard, because this is a, this comes back in other albums as well. Do you mm. think they knowingly did all of this stuff, or did it just happen by accident? Because there are so many little clues here and there for conspiracy yeah. theorists about Paul. Uh, I know. Well, Paul is dead. No, it's nothing to do with the Beatles whatsoever. Okay. No. It's all yeah. in the minds of their of, <laughs> it's all in of the mind, you know, over analytical uh, fans. Okay. <laughs> yes, Good. it is. Thanks for clearing that up. But it's not the last clue we're going to see about Paul is dead. Oh uh, no! Yeah. No, we'll get to Abbey Road yeah. and uh, yeah. And <laughs> I, I and I I read somewhere that Peter Blake only got something like five hundred quid or something for doing That's this right. album. Yeah. One of the most iconic albums of all time. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. And later he sued. But I think still friends of Paul to this day. Okay. Right. So uh, he's still, you know, he's he's in his late eighties now, I believe. Yeah. So it's he's still going strong. Great. Uh, and of course, it wasn't just innovative for the cover. Uh, yeah. Um, there's also the lyrics. Yes, uh, I think it's the first time lyrics have been on a rock album cover. Wow. So that was quite important. Yeah. Yeah. And again, there's the other clue about Paul. Paul with his back to the camera. It's like, oh, who is it? There you go. <laughs> it's not Paul. Yeah. It's not Paul. It's the imposter. Some of you even said it was Mal Evans, the Beatles' roadie. But actually, it is Paul. He, he just, you know, you know, slightly, you know, acting the mic. Yeah. 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 Great. <laughs> okay. So uh, moving on from Sergeant Pepper's to this abomination, yeah. I have to say, <laughs> probably there. I love the music on this album, but it's probably yeah. the ugliest album cover. Uh, yes. What can we say? Well, it's attached to the movie, so um, yes. obviously. What is there to say about this? Uh, what are they dressed as? Um, well, that's from the I'm a Walrus. Right. Uh, it's their costumes from I'm a Walrus. Okay. Again, it's another clue for, for you all. The Walrus was Paul. It's supposed to be another clue. Right. And things like that. And, of course, so when it says Beatles, apparently if you read it backwards, it looks like a series of numbers. Okay. And it's supposed to be a number to, to uh, get Paul in the afterlife <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. Okay. Well, actually, it, apparently, I can't remember what the number It's 537. I can't remember the rest, rest of the numbers now. Okay. Apparently, the fact that the, the the number is a, a phone number of a journalist who apparently had one of the few hadn't liked Sergeant Pepper or something like that. So okay. this guy got phone calls from America, especially all, all know, over the world. Uh, noon and night, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, well, it's certainly psychedelic. Uh, yeah. That's for sure. Um, yeah. 
but uh, not one of their most uh, most yeah. beautiful ones. Yeah. Uh, and of course, in England, it wasn't an album until later on because it was an EP to start with. Okay. Only this is an album in '76. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> good to know. And then we have a complete switch. 1968. Yes. Double yeah. album. Mm -hmm. uh, the White Album. Uh, yes. What, what What was the thinking behind this? Do you think? Well, it's, of course, the official title is just The Beatles, but it's also been nicknamed The White Album, uh, done by Richard Hamilton and other of these pop artists. Yeah. I think minimalism was around at the time, and it's a kind of a unique work of art, each one, because each one was individually numbered on the bottom right-hand corner. Okay. And uh, because it's individually numbered, it's an individual piece of art, you know, everyone, everyone's different. Okay. Now, of course, the ones with the lowest numbers are, are worth a lot of money. And Ringo had number one, and he just sold it as part of his Beatle collection, and it sold for hundreds of thousands, I think it was. Wow. Um, and, and the whole, like, minimalism thing, because if you look at Sgt. Pepper's, it couldn't get more yes. over the top than that. Um, no. Um, do you think it was a reaction to that as well? Or Possibly. I think there is lots of people reading things into Sergeant Pepper and this is like, you know, trying to read things into this, guys. You know, it's like, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, what's the song? Yeah. Glass Onion. <clears throat> yes. All exactly. about over-eager fans uh, yeah. with too yes. many theories. So it was yeah. just going the other direction. But of course, it came with the uh, the poster inside it with, with lots of collage of pictures by Richard Hamilton. Okay. And also okay. had the uh, all the lyrics on as well. And there's the four individual photos of each Beatle as well. Yeah. So, yeah, I, quite I, two. I read somewhere that there's actually a shop uh, that only sells the White Album. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's just like hundreds of White Albums with different yes. numbers, serial numbers, obviously. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. Good business. Uh, great. Okay. So, uh, and then uh, 1968, uh, we move into 1969, another movie. Yeah. Um, so, uh, obviously based on the, on the animation, uh, Yellow yes. Submarine. Yeah. Um, uh, very trippy, uh, very yeah. colorful. Uh, remind, yeah. Has a certain Monty Python-esque feel for me. Yeah. Heinz Eudemann was the actual designer. And he was a German poster artist, but often people have said it was Peter Max, but it's, it's kind of his similar style, but um, not him. <laughs> you yeah. get that, you see that read in many books that it's Peter Max, but it's not. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But um, I met all the um, animators and stuff a while ago and had an anniversary party on the 30th anniversary of the album coming out. And they're very interesting, but these very sort of straight guys. And they've always been asked why they're on LSD when they made the film. And they said, no, we're on brown ale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They just inspired by the Beatles music, really. And it is, yeah, it's pretty trippy. Yeah, surreal. I remember watching this movie as a young kid and yeah. uh, being absolutely terrified of Blue Meanies. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, I love them. I think they're really funny. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's fantastic uh um but yeah the album itself was uh wasn't their crowning musical achievement well again it was just like four new songs really and that was right. it and uh, the uh, second side is all george martin's incidental music for the film yeah so okay. I, I i don't really count it as a beatles album as such right yeah just something they I'm slipped sure. in halfway between it's a soundtrack uh, yeah, album. yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and and then we come. Uh oh, here we go. Yeah, to my uh, well, yes. uh, my favorite cover, uh, yes. possibly of any album. Um, yeah. And the, the most iconic image of the band together. Yes. Uh, well, the been yes. Copied by everybody from the Simpsons to the Red Hot Chili Peppers and, and so on. Uh, yeah. Do you want to talk us through uh, the background yeah. to this one? Well, the cover that's kept me in work for the last 20 years or okay. so, taking people to Abbey Road. Yeah, basically, originally, the, the title was going to be Everest. Okay. Named after the favourite brand of cigarettes smoked by Jeff Emmerich, the Beatles recording engineer. Ah, okay. And, and someone had the bright idea the Beatles should go to Mount Everest to shoot the album cover. Okay. And at this point, this is the last album they actually recorded, even though it came out before Let It Be. It's the last one they recorded. Things in the band weren't great. Okay. And for them to go anywhere together would have been a disaster. You know, uh, you know, interesting, but Mount Everest, no way. So they basically said, T too cold and you know, t 
too far yeah. <laughs> but too expensive as well so they just changed the title to abbey road actually the name of the road not the name of the studio that's they named the studio after the road and the album cover really so i didn't know that that's, yeah, that's EMI. so what the it was just called something else beforehand the studio EMI. EMI Studios. Ah. So they named after the album after the road, not the uh, that way around. So Amazing. yeah. And the studio is basically in there to the left, right? Where it's the, the it's the white wall is the uh, the wall of the studio. Just after yeah. the Beatle on the, on the, the left side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So the, the whole album is done by a guy called Ian McMillan, who was actually a friend of Yoko's. Okay. That the first picture John saw of Yoko was one of his. Uh, for the the uh, her exhibition at the Interkar Art Gallery. Okay. And uh, they came, it was about 11.30 in the morning, which is early for them. Mm. Normally they record at night time, so they arrive at like five in the afternoon, if not later. Right. So that's why I saw anyone around. The fans didn't know they were going to be there that early. Mm. So I saw anyone around. It took 10 minutes to do. Wow. Three going one way across and three the other. Amazing. But of course, since then, it's just, you know, every minute of every day, there's people on the Abbey Road crossing. It's just so every man, isn't it? Just yeah. four guys walking across the road. So, so, so this is really in a period like they're very close to breaking up now. This is, we're talking oh, yeah. the last weeks of the Beatles here. Literally, they, the last time together as a foursome was two weeks later. Wow. Okay. And, uh, and even you can see in their styles, they look quite different from each other, you know. Yeah. John is, look, looks like a lion with this crazy <laughs> white suit and his hair yeah. everywhere and beard. And uh, they yeah. all have very different styles. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah all are th uh, three of them, the only one, uh, three of them are wearing suits by um, a guy called Tommy Nutter. He was um, Great name. a tailor in Savile Row. Okay. Other than that as well. Yeah. And of course, it's this picture that really sparked the pool is dead. Right. right. <clears throat> yes. With the, so, uh, he's got no shoes on, uh, yeah. no socks on. Yeah. 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 And uh, they're in procession, but Paul's out of step. Okay. It, you know, John is supposed to be the, the preacher, Ringo, the undertaker, and George, the, the and George, the grave digger. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, Paul's holding his cigarette in his right hand because of how the real Paul McCartney's left handed. That can't be Paul. That must be the imposter. Oh. They even named the imposter a guy called William Campbell. Went on the alias Billy Shears. Hence on Sergeant Pepper. Yeah. You've got the Volkswagen car, the license plate 281F. If you believe the rumour, 28IF, which is supposed to signify that Paul McCartney would have been 28 years old if he was still alive. Wow. We're actually only 27 in 1969, so oh well. <laughs> okay. But who cares about a detail like that? The conspiracy yes. is much more interesting. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But again, it was just, it's, it all started as, as a student prank, really, because people were reading things of Beatles song lyrics and album covers that weren't really there for ages. Mm. And it already started, and um, a student rang up a DJ in Detroit called Russ Gibbs. Uh, telling him about the clues and it's after that that another student called Fred LeBur who just uh, got the Abbey Road album cover out and just you know invented this story yeah <laughs> this is the way yeah, ever since it's you know become part of the mythology of uh, yeah exactly yeah. 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 yeah there's some wonderful photos on on the internet of them around about uh, this photo shoot so for yes. example uh, yes. I found this one of them waiting and it's funny you know I go running uh on that street uh, every week and every time I run past there are incredibly frustrated taxi drivers and other drivers waiting yeah. for tourists to get oh, off the, uh, yeah. the pedestrian crossing uh, all having their picture taken but here you yeah. see them just lining up and George is smoking a cigarette and they're waiting to, to cross um, and yeah. some people <laughs> looking on um, and another one of them uh, sitting on the steps I presume yes. in the studio uh, is. just before yeah. uh, Looking a picture of happiness, uh, it has to be said. In, yeah, on that so. one, yeah. There's there's other pictures taken at the same time, but they're not really communicating at all. Okay. So, uh, it's just, uh, <laughs> it depends which one you choose, really. But um, And you see Paul's got his sandals on. Yeah. He yeah. only took them, in fact, on the, there's, there's, six, there's six pictures taken in all. I think for about three or four of them, he's got his sandals on. Okay. Thing is, it, Paul doesn't like wearing shoes in the summer. He still doesn't now. He wears sandals. Okay. Or barefoot, and um, he just took them off the last couple of shots, yeah. <laughs> which uh, sparks the rumour, of course. <laughs> Brilliant. 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, Abbey Road, and of course, well, we have the back uh, yeah. of the album as well. Yes. Uh, and apparently, Ian McMillan was very upset at the woman who got you know, ruined the, the, the room, woman in the dress and ruined the shot. They decided to choose that one anyway. Oh wow! Yeah, because it kind of makes yeah. it somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so again, you've got the um, various clues on here. There's the bit by it says Beatles, just to the to the uh, right of it. Mm-hmm. It looks if you look on its side, it's supposed to be in the shape of a skull, Paul McCartney's skull. Oh my God! Okay, it's <laughs> yeah, really pushing it now. Yeah, okay. and uh, Beatles is a slight split through the S. Yep. Oh, it's like oh, it's not quite. You know, it's just you know. So there's up. a the Beatles. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very good. What an al- what an album, though. I yeah, mean, uh, I mean the the, the the Abbey Road sign was was the original. They just put Beatles on top. Yeah. So um, yeah. And so uh, so and so actually, this album was recorded last. Uh, yes, it was. So the end yeah. is the last song. Uh, yes. The Beatles. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah. Well, they've got Her Majesty as well, but um, oh, <laughs> afterwards. Yeah, yeah exactly, but, uh, the secret song. But yeah, that's the thing. All their concerts ended with the national anthem. They always used to call it Her Majesty. Okay. <laughs> so that's probably going back to those days. Yeah. Um, okay, so then, but the final album to be released, yes. uh, which was recorded before Abbey Road, um, yes. was, was Let It Be. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, talk us through this one. Originally, the cover, the, the album's going to be called Get Back, and the cover was going to be a replica of the Please Please Me album taken exactly the same place. In fact, they had the picture taken there by the same photographer, Ang- 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 Angus McBean, okay. and that's the one that appears on the you know red and blue albums, you know, 62 to 66 and 67 to 17, it's that picture. Yeah. That's going to be the album cover. In fact, it's going to be called... Uh, get back with let it be and 12 other songs like the same wording as on please please me Mm -hmm. but for some reason well it took so long there's many different versions of the album made one by glenn johns and of course this version by phil spector Mm. which paul didn't like (laughs) didn't like long and winding road with the all the uh, choir and orchestra on that wasn't the idea at all the idea was the beatles and nature intended without any overdubs and of course the phil spector went completely against that and uh, so they just, this is Ethan Russell, I think, took, took these pictures. And of course, four individual pictures is interesting. So yeah. kind of the, the split between them, you know, if people read, of course, it came out just after they broke up. Yeah. Okay. So it's, you know, it's kind of the start of the solo, <laughs> I suppose you could say. I don't know. Absolutely. But and on so, a black background, you know, it's kind of. Yeah. Yes. Funereal. And the title, I guess, that was chosen in the yes, end, Let so, It Be. Let It Be, yeah. guys. It's all over. Stop. Uh, uh, yes. Stop pestering us. Yeah. 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 Uh, and that was the end. That was 1970, right? So, and, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. But what an amazing series of, uh, like, obviously we all know that they're, how amazing their music uh, uh, is. Um, <laughs> but what an incredible journey of artwork as well uh, that yes. inspired so many other artists later on with their album covers. They really raised the bar <laughs> for, uh, for for what it meant back in the days when album artwork was uh was just as important as uh, as the music itself yes and all the stories the conspiracy theories and things that around it all as well so exactly. kept people talking for years afterwards yeah yeah wonderful okay well that was great richard thank you very much okay. for joining us uh you're a treasure trove of information uh <laughs> anybody visiting london or living in london who wants to uh hear more and follow richard around the streets of uh, st john's wood marlebone and the west end and hear uh, uh, more about the Beatles, you'll find all the information uh, below the video via link. Uh, Thanks, Richard, and uh, thanks, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it, and we will uh, see you again soon for another episode of Deep. 